Everyone's been talking about these new AI agents and specifically OpenAI's new product, Operator. The only downfall is that it costs $200 a month, which is a lot. And in this video, I want to find out if that's worth it or not. If you're new to my channel, my name is Melky. I'm a senior machine learning software engineer at Twitch, where I've been working there for the past four years. And today I want to find out and actually use this OpenAI operator, this AI agent to do some tasks and find out if it's really that good. So like I just said, everyone's been talking about these new AI agents and specifically operator from OpenAI because it can apparently do a lot of crazy things for you. But the TLDR is that operator can actually have access to your browser, to your internet to do tasks for you. It Here's a demo from the actual OpenAI YouTube channel where you can see operator book a reservation. So you can see the problem. Book me a table for two at Beretta tonight at 7 p.m. And actually goes through the flow of taking control of your browser, using your credentials and booking the restaurant for you, which is pretty cool. And a while back, I made this tweet that said, are AI agents just a new sexier way of saying bots that automate tasks? And a lot of people agreed, but there was also a good number of people that disagreed saying that these new AI agents using LLM on the backend are a lot more capable and sophisticated and have a lot better looping logic. So all of this got me thinking, I need to try out this capability. I want to try this out. So I literally went to OpenAI, which is arguably the biggest AI LLM company, and I got the ChatGPT Pro account. Now, if you don't know, this account costs $200. And if you're asking yourself, why is it $200? Well, operator can only be used with the pro account. So here you go. I actually did this. That's $200. I will never see again. So if you can, please comment, like, and subscribe. It will make this financial hit a lot more recoverable. Okay, so let's start off pretty simple. Uh, please log into my Gmail account and send an email to Theo at ping.gg saying that his hair is too bleached. Okay, I'm unable to help with this task. Okay, uh, that's surprising. Uh, or maybe not, let's see, why not? Okay, it just, it doesn't seem to be able to do it. Okay, okay, so we're just gonna guess, I guess we're gonna put an X here, I think. Next task, can you, can you search up hotels in uh, Vegas and find me the best option to book for a trip in March? Okay, so you can see here, this is now it's operating the browser. So you can see hotels. So it's using Microsoft Bing. I'm not too surprised for this. It's actually, so it's using the search to find some prices. It's actually pretty cool to watch this in real time. Okay, so it looks like you found a hotel, a four star hotel near the strip priced $85 per night. It was a pleasant, it has pleasant ratings and offers amenities like free parking and a swimming pool. Would you like to book this hotel explore more options? Okay, cool. Looks like you can probably do a decent job at doing that. Okay, let's go to the next task, but let's give this a uh, check mark. Uh, can you go to Ticket Master and find the best prices for the upcoming UFC event in Seattle? Oh, whoa, ho, oh, wait, what happened? I counted an issue on Ticketmaster where my browsing activity was paused due to unusual behavior. It suggests signing in or changing the network. How would you like to proceed? Oh, interesting. So Ticketmaster actually detected uh, AI operator or open AI operator as a bot. Okay, cool. Okay, um, let's sign in then. I'll need, your, I'll need you to sign into Ticketmaster. Could you please take control and do that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so if I click take control, okay, so it says I have control. So Ticketmaster sign in. No, okay, it looks like I have actually been blocked uh, by Ticketmaster because I am using, like, okay, is this one better? No, yeah, I'm fully, I am fully blocked. Okay, uh, instead of ticket master, can we use StubHub? Let's see, it's gonna put in Seattle now. It's pretty cool to see like update all these fields and know where all the fields are. I think that is pretty intense, but I can, it's cool to just kind of watch it too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Wow, okay, so it looks like it found me section 211 row L. Uh, apparently these are 21% cheaper than the average ticket in this section. Cool. I mean, this this is uh, this is pretty good. I mean, yeah, it, it can definitely. I I think maybe like give it half because, 
I mean, Ticketmaster blocked it, but it worked well on StubHub. Okay, now let's see how well it does at actually getting data and gathering data. So go to LinkedIn and find me all the job postings for software engineering in, let's say New York, in New York. Okay, so it says I have to log in. So let me quickly log in then. So log in and browser, I'm gonna take control of this one more time. I actually logged in to LinkedIn using my own personal LinkedIn here. Okay, so I found several job postings. Okay, uh, I don't know. P present me the results for the top 20. Okay, so I found me the jobs next. Okay, uh, give me the application link to these 20 jobs. Oh, okay, it's fine. It's finally done. So it worked for seven minutes and here are the application links for the job posting I gathered. So it got me seven application links out of the 20 here. That's not that good, I feel like. I think you could do a lot better. And this is where the channel sponsor comes into play, Bright Data. Bright Data is a great source to use for all of your data scraping, web scraping, anything like that. If you need data sets, this is the place for you. They have lots of different APIs that you can just plug in and chug, such as getting Indeed job listing information, LinkedIn job listing information. I actually used their LinkedIn job information data set to create techrolls.io, which I've already made a video covering in the past, but their web scraping tool is definitely one that I was made aware of. After watching a video from Fireship where he explained how web scraping can be done very easily with bright data so if you guys want go check them out link will be in the description down below i think it's a much better way to find information and get information for your application that you're bu building where i think right now certain operators and ai agents may lack that human capability that bright data scrapers are able to mimic okay so can it do some data scraping i guess i'll, I'll give it a half on this um, advanced searching. So I actually thought I don't want to do advanced searching right now. Let's just see. Can the, can the operator upload a YouTube short for me? So I'm going to go back to my operator. I'm going to make a new window. Can you log into my YouTube account and upload a YouTube short from my Google Drive? Uh, I can help with the, could you please provide the YouTube short file from a Google Drive and any deals like title, description, or tags you'd like to include? Okay. Okay, so I got this link to this drive I have. So let's go ahead and plug the link here. Title, AI, LLMs are just a tool for engineers. Okay, so I can see it is downloading the right one. Okay, that's great. So you can see it's downloading. Cool, it downloaded. Okay, so let's see what's happening. It, uh, home. OAI, AI is a tool. Okay, so I found the AI tool. Should I proceed with uploading to YouTube? Yes. I don't know what this is. Is this Bing's like download file history or something? Never seen this before. Okay, so here, there's a default title. Is it gonna change the title I asked it to change it to? It, it did. Okay, great. The title has been updated. Uh, would you like to add description or any other deal before I proceed with the upload? Can you just... Uh, can you actually change the title to say this was uploaded using AI and make the description just something generic and catchy? No checks, no corporate issues. Okay, let's click next. Let's make sure it's public. This video is, yep, let's, uh, let's make it public. All right, it published the video. Sweet. It publishes by Melky Dev Vod's channel, um, which is not the correct YouTube channel. I have multiple under the same email address, but that's fine. That's not a big deal. Uh, but it is interesting that it never even confirmed or asked me to check it out. So you can view it using this link. So let's click this link. And there's the actual short. That's kind of nifty. That's pretty cool. So can it upload a YouTube short? I'm going to give it a, a three out of four shakes here, okay? Three out of four, because it didn't do the best job, but it still did the job. However, one thing I want to note is it took a very, very long time to do this. Um, 
It worked for one minute, then 40 seconds, then another 44 seconds, another 28 seconds, another 20 seconds, another 20 seconds, another 6 seconds, and another 13 seconds to upload one short on the wrong YouTube channel. So the question that's on everyone's mind when they click this video, is this AI agent worth $200 a month? And my answer is absolutely not. If operator was the only thing you get in that $200 a month pro package, that would be the biggest fleece in history of marketing and products. Thankfully, OpenAI gives you other options, not just the operator, right? The research preview of operator break. It gives you extended access to Sora, a bunch of other things that could be worth $200. I haven't really explored them, but operator itself is not good. I would not recommend it. It can send emails, at least for me. It does an okay job at booking hotels and finding tickets, even though Ticketmaster blocked it, which made me think and reminded me of this tweet from Kevin Roos, where he used Opera to update his own website, and it decided it needed to log into my Google account, now watching and try to solve a CAPTCHA, which it doesn't do a good job of. You can see, select all squares of bicycles. It's just, it's just selecting random squares. It doesn't actually do the proper job. It takes, like, I don't know what it's doing, just selecting the wrong squares. It can't solve CAPTCHAs. So that's gonna be it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know. Uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe for more. Leave a comment. Are you using Operator? Is there any use cases that I didn't explore with it? I'm definitely curious to what you guys have to know with this new AI agent product that we see, but definitely let me know what your thoughts. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and once again, I hope you guys had a great day. Take it easy. Peace.